I direct common I direct Common Grace Ministries, which is a faith-based nonprofit, nonprofit in Northern Indiana. And TechSoup has been a foundation for us for many years. All of our Word um, or Windows, um, we have several things that we've used over time. QuickBooks, when we re reinvented our accounting system or actually invented it um, several years ago, TechSoup was there for us. And I don't know that we would have been able to do that without TechSoup. So. We are a, a huge fan and thank you very much. Thank you and thank you for sharing. And when you use um, QuickBooks, are you using it to manage grants or just manage donations? Pretty much everything accounting, everything that's tied in. Um, we do have a grant calendar that we set up kind of as a reminder for ourselves, um, but we, are, we have been able to, um, you know, before we put TechSoup in place and before we were able to do that and get QuickBooks into place, I mean, we had everything on spreadsheets and no real connection with our accountants. And so we, it really helped us to overhaul and we've had a 300% increase in our bottom line. And I fully believe that doing a better job of managing that and managing, you know, communications with, with our two offices through our Windows programs, that has all played into our successes that we're experiencing now. I agree. And you said the key word managing. So it's it's work that you have to put in. Thank you yes. for saying that. All right. Did we get the gentleman, Stephen? Is he able to um, come and join us? Do you see him in the... Um... Oh, Stephen, there you go. Hi. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um... You know, we, we're in the process of putting in place a, a new strategic plan and we started rolling out to the company, but what's really underlying it for us is a focus on getting out of this, the nonprofit starvation cycle, right? I mean, we spent 50 years in it, um, underfunding, under supporting, make, making do. Um, so we, we, it's interesting. I have to admit that in an earlier life, I was a consultant. So one of the things I did is I reached out to some consultants and in really in some work that the Bridge Band Group did and just looked at it, read it and said, yeah, this is the problem with the starvation cycle model that they talk about with the large nonprofits they work with. So really what, what we did is we kind of tore apart the organization, made a big investment in technology, and now we're ready to, to reap the benefits. So we figured out we have to grow our revenue by about at least 30% which given the fact that so many other agencies are scaling back really isn't that hard um, mm -hmm. because we have a lot of unserved people uh, in the state of Oregon. So if we, if we get to that number with the investments that we made, then we know we can get a sufficient return to be able to fund our operations um, from our services and our grant making then really becomes focused on projects. So we want to, you know, the state no longer funds some artistic work. We are now going after a grant to bring that program back. It was so popular with our clients. Um, and that really is a big change. So getting the revenue up is number one. Um, number two is a really a focus on better developing our people, which we couldn't do before until we did this. So, you know, and then, you know, for, and then, and then finally, the third part of the plan, this is really just a simple plan, is, is to complete the tech, the investments that we've made in, in technology and processes. You know, we, we, you know, and TechSoup was a huge part of this for us, right? But we, we put together, we, it's been a two year process to change our technology, $300,000 budget, cost us just under 300, all 100% grant funded, we actually spend less for software, state-of-the-art software, thanks to TechSoup, than we used to pay for software that ran on XP computers and was unsupported. Uh, that alone was mind-numbing to us. Um, and the result of that is that, you know, we, we, we've got a plan that enables us now to pay a living wage. We're the only agency out of 60, 70 in the state that pays a living wage. So... Wow. You know, it's been it's been a success story here, and I think I, we're really thankful that we ran into this concept of the starvation cycle because it kind of gave us a path out. So even though we didn't pay the money penny, thank you to the consultants at Bridgepan <laughs> for awesome. giving us a model and a path forward. 
That's beautiful. There was a lot of um, questions in the chat room. People want to know um, who do you serve and um, you know, your, your population? So we, uh, we serve, we say people with diverse abilities. That is a diagnosis of intellectual developmental disability. And we focus on day services and employment. And we do this across, we used to just serve the Portland, Oregon area. We now serve most of the state of Oregon. That's an expansion that is going to take us about a year to, to grow this part of our organization about 30%. Again, because other agencies are pulling back, they don't have the funds and we're being asked to step in and we're fortunate now to be able to do that because of this, of this change. Um, I heard you say a couple of things, and Robert, I see your hand raised. Um, you talked about getting your revenue up. You talked about so his strategy. We're sharing strategies, getting the red of revenue up to focus on better relationships in people. People, that's that's who we need, you know, to build our nonprofits, volunteers, um, you know, donors, and then complete your investment um, that you made in technology. So that's awesome. Stephen, they want to know about the starvation cycle. I'd never heard of that, the nonprofit starvation cycle. I've never heard of that. So it's, it's a concept um, that was put into writing by a group called Bridgespan. And they typically work with, you know, huge foundations, international nonprofits and things like that. that if, if you know the consulting world, they grew out of one of the largest consulting firms in the world and in and, and Bain and Company. Um, and it's a, the, the concept is really simple. I'm just pulling up a sheet here. Um, but right, the, the, the funders want us to have minimal administrative costs. So that puts pressures on nonprofit to, to underfund administration, which then leads to us, in addition, misreporting because we're underfunded. We don't have the data. We're not reporting it correctly. So now the funders are going, well, I can't trust the data. <laughs> and you get into this loop. Um, and that is called the starvation cycle by the Bridge Bridgepan group. And it is, um, I think it's a really accurate description, you know, wow. and it, it's, uh, I, I didn't even realize when I first started nonprofits that we were living it. It, it gave me a, a vehicle to think and talk about why we are where we are and why we can't pay a living wage and why we can't better support our clients. This is great. See, this is why I love ED Chat for moments like this. You cannot get this anywhere. And thank you, Stephen, for sharing that. Um, uh, Robert, uh, we're so glad you're here. Go ahead and unmute yourself and feel free to share. I'm, I'm coming from about 45 years of experience in fundraising, which is uh, not, not before you go, wow. Uh, most of that is from a pastoral experience. Mm -hmm. Now, when you've got a congregation to go to, it's a little bit different than when you're going to from a, a nonprofit sector. And so uh, the nonprofit sector is, is totally different. And so what we're doing this year is going and building relationships. The corporations are great. The grants are great. But we're realizing it's the individual that's going to carry us through. And uh, we know what that starvation cycle is. Uh, I think it was uh, during the Bush administration that somebody said, uh, you don't let a good disaster go to waste. Uh, because during the disasters, when our funds come in, that's when people give. They don't give to you whenever there's not a disaster because they don't think about it. And uh, uh, when it comes to raising funds, I came to a point this year, <clears throat> at the end of last year, that I had to say this, hi, my name is Robert, and I'm a dummy. Uh, because in raising funds, I was looking at it all the wrong way. Uh, I noticed all these organizations that was out there. In fact, I had signed up with TechSoup a long time ago, never have utilized it. Uh, I don't even know how to use it. Uh, they asked, I, I went and looked at it the other day and they were asking me for a number. I have no earthly idea what that number is. Wow. And so I've got an email to them to find out what it is. 
I didn't even know I could get stuff through TechSoup. And so, so here I am underutilizing some stuff that we could have been utilizing that we could have used for a long time. And so I'm just now getting into the game saying, you know what, there's stuff out there we can use. And, and I'm just trying to uh, learn from other people uh, things that we need to learn from other people and realizing that it is about the individual, not about um, doing it all alone by yourself. Yeah, yeah, this, this is great. I'm so glad that you came on. And we have a group with the faith-based um, leaders. So we have a, a webinar coming up in a couple of weeks called Faith-Based Tech Connections. The, what you just said is what I'm seeing a lot of faith-based organizations, especially pastors, having to pivot from being you know, inside the church, giving the tithes and offerings to now being more out in the community, serving the community, which means you have to learn fundraising, which means you have to go to those people and build relationships. So I would love if you would attend that um, session. We're going to put the link in there to the Faith-Based Tech Connections webinar in a couple of weeks, and we'd love if you all would register for that. Um, Tanya, hi, how are you? Is hi. Tanya or Tanya? No, it's Tanya. It's Tanya. Tanya. Okay. <laughs> all right. Okay, hold on one moment. I Okay, so I'm excited um, first, first and foremost because I actually learned about TechSoup back in, I think, 2016 when I was looking to open up our, our relationship coaching organization. And when we opened that up, we have a for-profit entity called Married to the Ring. Um, but during the pandemic, we went through 13, 15-month planning to extend a part of our services to justice involved, a, com a specific component. So when we started our planning, I went back and said, let me take a look at TechSoup. So I'm going to share with you where we are. And I'm so excited because I'm not an ED. I am only the board chair, but we were about to um, hire our staff. And I heard some of the pain points already. So we do have um, coming from a corporate background, we made sure that our staffing, our operations had benefits and it was a competitive salary. Um, and we were able to put up front and be able to justify the need um, and also look at opportunities with the state because the state, because we're looking at justice involved in the turnover, we're looking at staff that are that have come out the system and our state does offer us federal bonding um, for the first year if we employ uh, those individuals. But what's interesting is I um, got from TechSoup, I'm a systems, I'm about automation, coming from corporate, that manual paper environment is just not me. So we did automate our board and governance process uh, with some of the tools that we had. Um, and we also understanding, I come from a construction background as well. Salesforce is very expensive for us on the for-profit side. So I was happy to learn about the Salesforce uh, discount. In addition to that, we also did something, Aretha, that I fell in love with. We partner with We, we Pledge to embed all of our fundraising and um, uh, securing payments through e-commerce. And also there's another organization, I don't have the name at the, my fingertip that you all included because Bitcoin is going to be the new currency for, yeah. um, for nonprofits. So we yeah. have already implemented all of the uh, transactions to be able to receive in various e-commerce forums. So we're now about to move in. We have, I'm only, we got our 501c3 to your uh, Erica um, during the pandemic, which was April of last year. And we were picked up by the largest foundation in this region called Longwood Foundation. And they undergirded us through a grant fellow program where they're doing a pilot. So we actually submit our first grant uh, to them actually this quarter because they've taken the burden, the financial burden of us having to retain additional uh, consultants to build out the rest of our our uh, organization, they're, they're undergirding the cost for that so that we can implement our staff accordingly. And so um, TechSoup, I I'm all about it. I mean, we are ready for Do More 24 and we haven't even officially opened, you know, because that's a big thing here in Delaware, a uh, big fundraising initiative with all the marketing toolkits. But we got a lot of the information from 
TechSoup prior to so that we knew how to build out all of our campaigns. So I, I probably said too much, but I no. just want to let you know <laughs> that before we deploy, we, we understood the importance of diversifying our portfolio to look at various revenue streams um, because we saw the, the handicap. And that's one of the reasons why we parsed out from or from our parent for profit and set justice involved in order for us to get through this, if we go through the other uh, neighboring nonprofit organizations, there's a lot of red tape and systems and things that need to be changed and policies, whereas we're already positioned to go ahead and hit the ground running. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, so I heard you say a couple of things. Automation. Yes. Automation. Automation is so key. Um, I need to do more of myself. Um, the board tools, the fundraising, and someone mentioned um, they want to know about accepting Bitcoin. Is every .org is every .org, and so Tanya, you, you may want to go through the chat room and see some people were asking you some questions. Go ahead and answer those questions okay. in there. Um, they want to know the name of your nonprofit, who you're working with. Um, I see Jeff. I see your hand raised, and I would like to acknowledge you. Thank you so much, Tanya. Thank you. Hi, Jeff. You can. Oh, hey, up. sorry, I was on mute. Yeah, hey, hey Tanya, I, I, I um, just also wanted to share, I'm, I'm excited to be joining. Um, I'm uh, the leader of uh, Ignited, which is a, uh, a longstanding um, nonprofit in California, uh, 36 years now, I guess. Um, and we, so we basically, um, uh, provide uh, teachers and students experiences that help them get into a variety of different career paths. And this year, what we've done, or last year, what we've done differently and looking forward to this year, um, we formed really strategic partnerships and a, a kind of a joint venture project with other nonprofits. And we're kind of expanding that to get students to go into advanced career paths. So things like um, data science, uh, you, you know, machine learning, advanced manufacturing, and it's mostly focused on Title I schools. So kids don't um, kids don't have access to these kind of careers. Um, but what we're really focused on is is developing the curriculum they need, the supports for teachers, and uh, doing that with a group of partners. So why TechSoup is important, and part of the reason I'm here and hoping to engage more with the community is. We've, we've actually been really successful last year. We, we, for a brand new program that's a little over a year old, we managed to secure about $3 million worth of funding um, through various grants. That wasn't a kind of a one-shot thing. I think we're now at five grants or something, um, including a big federal with the Department of Navy for cybersecurity curriculum for these kids. So we're in this really great position and, and grants were not a revenue stream for us moving forward. So we are foot to the accelerator with this stuff with other partners. The challenge for us is um, now that we're developing curriculum for these kids and we, we, we're really turning our, our boat pretty quickly, um, we have technology needs for things like, well, where are we going to store this curriculum? Where are we going to form these teacher communities online and what kind of software exists and you know we're <laughs> I don't want to say we're the victim of our success that is way too early to declare that but it's causing all these downstream technology questions and integration questions across partners that um, you know we're meeting on a weekly basis to try to figure out what a joint venture model looks like in the nonprofit world but it's going to be a very interesting year moving forward. So I'm hoping to tap this community for advice and ideas and um, different, you know, different ways we can um, make the, make this a success because we're off to a, a super fast start or, or new partners as well because um, we're open to that. But anyway, I just wanted to share that and I'm I'm really glad to be here and and appreciate this discussion. So. I'm glad you're here too. Jeff, put your information in the chat room because I know there's someone here that could probably connect with you because you say, you said a lot, a lot of nonprofits, they start and sometimes things take off super, super fast. There's some who, who sit back and say, well, we aren't getting grants and you know, nothing's happening, but you guys took off super, super fast. And so now, yeah, managing that, learning to navigate that and, you know, make sure that you stay on that path please put your information in the chat room. I know someone who can probably relate and 
connect with you because we want we want Jeff to continue on this path, right? We want him to stay strong. See, there's already some people already connecting with you. Um, Marilyn, please unmute yourself and welcome. You you are still muted if if you're if you're speaking. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me now? We can hear you. We Is hear an echo, echo, but we can hear side? you. Um, I think it's on your end because it's the first time I'm hearing it. Give me one second. Okay. Can you can you just call me next? Let me fix this. Sure thing. Um, Atiba, I'm hoping I, were, did you have your hand raised? Did I say that right? I did, and you pronounced it great, so thanks. Okay, hi, welcome. Hi, so I am um, in a unique situation. I am uh, the youngest president of a board here, and uh, we hired a consultant during the pandemic. We got some um, COVID relief funds from our local arts council uh, has been really awesome and fighting for us and making sure that we had access. Uh, our group was a nonprofit club uh, celebrating blues culture and music, um, by extension, you know, black culture. And so it's been really interesting trying to learn. I come from the corporate world as well, learning the nonprofit uh, landscape as a leader is much different. Trying to figure out how to motivate people um, that are volunteers. We have a board of 16 that's all volunteers. It's supposed to be a working board, but we all know how that goes, right? And so um, we've we've come from the nonprofit club world um, where we were a membership club. You know, you joined our society and got some discounts on some concert tickets and stuff like that. Um, but also they developed programs over the years. So when I took over three years ago, we had to figure out what to do um, and how to maintain they also didn't save any money. And I have no qualms saying that I'm not like airing dirty laundry, but for a 36 year old institution, you're like, oh great, you've been around for 36 years. Um, well, I got empty bank accounts. So, <laughs> so we've been working now to um, you know, uh, make a strategic plan and I'm learning that process uh, in the nonprofit world. I'm learning um, how to develop partnerships and um, how to monetize partnerships, you know. Um, you know, we are an old dog, but a poor dog. So we can't just walk up to somebody and say, hey, we've got 10,000 bucks to throw at this, because we don't, <laughs> you know. Uh, so I'm really uh, interested in uh, things, strategies people have in um, the TechSoup workshops um, I sign up for often. We got a new office uh, last year. Uh, we had a one-room office that was kind of be used for festival storage. Uh, but it's in like a skyscraper in downtown. So I requested from the board that we get more space. So we're developing internship programs and volunteer programming um, that'll help us as well as, um, you know, redoing our committees and stuff like that so that we can actually execute programming. And I've designed lots of great programming and continued programs that we had and kind of doctored them up. Now we just need funding. So we're in some grant cycles and trying to hear back from some grants that we've applied for at the end of last year. So. Well, thank you for sharing that. Put your information in the chat room. And I, and I love that you said that you guys are working on a strategic plan. If, if you've never done a strategic plan, everybody here, I suggest that you do that. Um, do a strategic plan, a three-year or five-year strategic plan. And um, Daphne, I see you said that you are not able to raise your hand. So I'll go ahead and let you unmute yourself. Go ahead and unmute yourself. And then you can um, make your comment or ask your question. Um, my name is Dale Finghog, and I have a, my ministry is Life Changing Ministry uh, Foundation, and what we do, we help individuals that are getting out of prison and at risk youth, and we teach them a skill. So <clears throat> I'm going, coming into this kind of fresh. I don't know who to partner with or how to partner with any other nonprofits. Um, I've tried to, but I've been burnt. But what our organization is mainly is trying to get the guys that are coming out of prison and give them a skill in the automotive or give them a skill in drone, um, in the drone uh, flight aviation, and then working with at-risk at youth also and giving them a skill. 
but my problem is trying to find the resources that I need to help me uh, move forward on this project. And I was just wondering if there was any, um, anyone out there, you could help me with some ideas of what I need to do. Okay, um, I know someone had put in there that they were a part of a prison ministry as well. Would you put your information in the chat room? Um, they wanted to know what state are you in? I'm in Texas. In Texas, okay. So yeah, somebody else um, put that they were a part of a nonprofit. And when you say you were looking for resources, and Marilyn, I do see that you say you're ready to speak. When you say you were looking for resources, or excuse me, looking for partners or resources, what kind of partners, or do you know? That's the question. You don't know what kind of partners you need. No, what, what? I don't. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, oh, no, it's no. okay. It's okay. It's okay. So is it, is it, you have your program, you have a curriculum for people who get out of prison. You have that. Yes, correct, I have right? that all together. Um, I'm in the process of putting that together so that I can get the school, um, um, go through the Texas workforce and get the school approved so that we can all offer the courses. But okay. um, Tanya, Tanya put that there's- We're justice involved. involved. Because that's the new Great. term that they use now. It's justice involved, that. yeah. So both of you put your information in the chat yeah. room so that you can connect with each other. And yeah. Daphne, I imagine it's the funding portion. So now so you have a connection on. that okay. you guys could both connect with each other. This is okay. great. This is why we are community. Thank you so much for okay, thank um, you saying so that, much. Ryan. You're welcome. Um, Marilyn, we are ready for you. Is this better? It's much better. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Marilyn Harris. I'm also out of Texas. I'm in Houston. And to the young lady that was just speaking, I'd like to talk to you to see if we can be of service. Uh, my organization is the Women Veterans Business Center. We was, were the co country's first Women Veterans Business Center. We started in 2010. Um, women veterans is a common term now, but when I was in the army in the eighties and after I got out for 20 plus years, nobody was talking about women veterans. And then in 2008, nine and 10, no one was helping women veterans with entrepreneurship or just start and grow business. That's where we started. Now we're rebranding, re innovating because of COVID. It showed us so much. Women did not fare well in America, all women, the unemployment rate was from 6% to 11% for disabled women like myself in terms of unemployment. So we said, what can we do about the here and now? What can we do to help this stop? And we started a women veterans uh, tech career and tech startup business initiative with our partners, Microsoft. And so we're, we're an educational charity I actually am a nurse. I was an army nurse. I'm a nurse of 35 years and I pivoted to cybersecurity. So I've been the poster child for showing women at whatever age, whatever you look like, whatever you don't know, as long as you're breathing and your brain is working, you can study and learn and you can be and do just about anything. And so um, I just want to say, publicly, the most important thing I want to say is thank you TechSoup for everything. We most recently bought the Wix website. We're in Boost. And over the years, we've used you in so many other ways to help us go forward. We are looking for partnerships to the pastor that had the cybersecurity program. I'm a cybersecurity consultant. I'm a believer. You can reach out to me and to us. We're in Houston, but hey, because of Microsoft, we're virtual. We have 10,000 team seats where we can talk and collaborate and uh, just do good together. So I just want to thank TechSoup again and thank you, Ms. Simmons, for this opportunity. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. And thank you for your service. I'm a, a Navy veteran, 21 years myself. So thank you so much. Um, Alicia, so someone put in the chat, well, actually, I want to share this with everybody. Alicia sent me this note. Some of you may not be familiar with Zoom. You're getting private messages in your chat room that's only going to you. So it's not going to everybody else. So check your private chat rooms. And if you don't know how to do that, put a one in the chat room and I'll share my screen to show you how, because, I, you know, don't, don't feel bad. Um, it's just, we're in technology world, so it's okay. Um, okay, um, 
All right, good. So everybody knows how to do it, okay? And somebody said the LinkedIn nonprofit group isn't that active. Better have our own tech soup one for this. Okay, so <laughs> I get it. So um, somebody wanted to do a Facebook group for us and a, a LinkedIn or something like that. Um, I'll work on it and we'll, we'll, we'll figure this out. Thank you for putting your information in there. Guys, you were sharing. This is what community is all about sharing, putting your information in there. Anybody else want to um, share some of your strategies? This has been amazing. I've never heard this much. I'm gonna go back to gallery view, heard this much um, that's going on. Uh, as I'm, I'm gonna say your name wrong. So go ahead and unmute yourself, A-Z Jargal, and tell us how to pronounce your name. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, can you hear me now? We can hear you. Introduce okay, yourself. Great. Yeah, hello. I'm Aza. Uh, you can okay. just call me Aza. And uh, I'm from Mongolia, but I'm in uh, Silicon Valley with a nonprofit that fights air pollution in Mongolia. It's quite deadly over there, just like black smog every day. Um, we're quite a new organization. Um, our challenge has been our volunteer. Everyone is a volunteer. Nobody's paid full time or part time. So our goal is to raise enough funds to at least be able to um, afford to pay people part-time or full-time with Mongolian salary. And, and I think it's like thousand bucks a month, which is okay. And I wanted to get your feedback on the way we want to come up with our strategy. So we have like few projects in the pipeline and we're thinking of like prioritizing, you know, which ones we wanna focus on this year and next year. And then uh, each project has a budget. And then we can uh, come up with different ways to fundraise for them. You know, pitch the different projects and whoever wants to donate uh, to that specific project can contribute. And my question is, um, we were thinking of like having 30, 40, $50 paying monthly donors every month, but I think it's too small and people can stop anytime, right? So if you are familiar with any uh, sources for fundraising for climate change and air pollution, uh, please let me know. I would greatly appreciate it. And I think it's uh, getting fun, you know, 20,000, 30,000 at a time would be much better than asking for 30 bucks a month from individuals. So that's my question. And also shout out to TechSoup. They've been lifesavers for all of our technical needs and uh, working remotely from 10 different countries, um, TechSoup made a huge difference for us, so yeah. Wow, well, thank you for the shout out and thank you for what you do for climate change. Um, sometimes we, we don't take it, you know, we take it for granted, but air we're breathing and you know just going out in the water we're drinking. So if there's anyone in the chat room that's familiar with, or this is, your, this is a passion um, project of yours, you know about funding for, um, for climate change, please put it in the chat room and put your information in the chat room how we can reach out to you as well. Right now, I can't think of anyone. Someone put in um, Greenleaf. So there's a lot of things in here. Uh, and as we're going, I'm sure people will put in there. Uh, see, Janine works with climate change. And so you can reach out to her. Um, someone asked, does TechSoup maintain a list of strategic planning cons consultants? Right now, there's not a list list. Um, they're all people in your community. We do have uh, a platform that's going to be launched really soon. I can't remember the name of it. Please forgive me. I hope I don't get fired for this, but it's going to have it's going to have consultants on there, so we'll be able to um, put that up for you. If you are a consultant, go ahead and put your name right here in the chat room. I mean, I'm a consultant. I see my um, co-partner here. If she's still in here. Lashika, I see lots of you, even you all are consultants, you specialize in this. So share your information. This is what we're here for. It's nothing that, you know, um, wrong with this. This is how we grow. That's what we are here for, to grow. Um, see, J Jennifer, great, thank you. Everybody's putting their information here, great. Um, if you please share with everybody else, cause I got a direct message to me put it in to everybody. That's the, the one thing you wanna make sure your chat room says everyone. Cause if it just comes to me, I'm kind of multitasking, unable to um, move around and navigate sometimes. Anyone else wanna share any strategies that you have? We have learned so much today, right? 
this has been amazing. <laughs> yeah, I see a lot of heads nodding. This has been amazing. Um, this is what I love about ED Chat. Uh, Sabrina, put her information in there. Great. Uh, this has been great. Yes, it has been, Lashika. Put your information in there as well. The go to chick. I am telling you, you need her information. Um, anyone else would like to share? There was something that I forgot to mention before that I um, would like to mention. Sure, absolutely. Um, as we're resetting, you know, our organization, like I said, we're 36 years old. So it was starting in 1985. I was five years old, you know. Um, yeah, I'm only 40. I'm going to be 42 in a few days. So um, one thing that I noticed about boards in the nonprofit world is there tends to be a really big um, age gap. Um, boards tend to be, from what I'm seeing, like 40 and 50 and up. And um, in our local arts community and in the nonprofit sector here, and we're, I'm in Greensboro, North Carolina, um, a city of about 300,000 people with a really high percentage of um, nonprofits per capita. I think one of the last report I said, so if you have something like 700 nonprofits registered, like in my county. Um, and so uh, when we have these discussions, as I'm learning, uh, I'm also sharing with folks, we're building our strategy. Um, one thing we're doing is looking at a strategy for the next 35 years. Um, we're not just looking at, we're, we're looking at how we can position our organization to be ready to respond in 35 years. Um, and part of that is making sure that we are building what I call a 21st century blue society, because that's kind of the group of organizations that our thing comes out of. But um, I'd encourage everybody, look at your organization, not for what you're comfortable with now. Um, look towards the future. Like I, I, I tell our board all the time, you know, we're building a 21st century blue society and we're 20 years late. Um, mm -hmm. And so we got to think about that. Think about engaging in different ways. Think about the fact that like the programming and stuff that we're doing, um, we're not doing it for what we want. We're doing it for the community that exists now. And a lot of nonprofits talk about engaging youth, but then the strategies don't really line up. Um, so we've been looking at that. Um, one thing we've done with that um, is centered people first. You know, um, we had to really make sure that we are looking at people. I don't, I told my board our 36 year old festival is the longest continuous blues festival in the Southeast. I said, I don't care if we ever do this festival again, if we're not really meeting our mission and teaching people. Otherwise we're just bringing people to a concert and that's not what we're here for. It's not what the mission said. It's not what we signed up for. So um, people want to really- Thank you for sharing that. Thank it, you yeah. for sharing that. I appreciate that. I appreciate your insight too as a young person. Angela, I see your hand is raised. Okay, Go thank ahead, you. Unmute yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what Atiba was just saying is really resonant and it's very aligned with what I was gonna say. I know there's a lot of questions about ending the nonprofit starvation cycle. Um, I wanna bring DEIA into this conversation because I think that's a huge part of ending the nonprofit uh, starvation cycle. And it's really grounded first in identifying your core values as an organization. So yeah, what's your mission, but then what are the values that are gonna get you there? And every action you take as an organization has to align with those core values. And those core values need to be carefully identified, publicly articulated and consistently articulated so that when you're taking an action like analyzing your pay equity within your organization, you know, looking at different demographic reference points on your staff, you can then say, look, we have a core value of equity and inclusion across the organization. We're taking a hard look at who is getting compensated at different levels, what is their uh, racial and gender background, um, and then how do we level that? So then, once you look at that, you can then put it, you do the analysis, you put it in your budget, you utilize allocation tables so that when you're allocating staff salaries and things, you can allocate them to appropriate programs. Um, and then you communicate it publicly, grounding it in core values. That's how you end the nonprofit starvation cycle is because you're aligning your actions, your strategic actions, your financial actions, your analyses to what you say you believe in. So I think that's really the starting point for ending the nonprofit starvation cycle, getting a strategic communication process so that you're articulating that publicly 
clearly on your website and all your communications, that's what gets the support of the of the public who's going to fund you. Wow. Uh, can I give you some snaps? Um, because see, we, we don't get too much into um, diversity, equity, inclusion in our nonprofit. We're, you know, focus on so many other things, but it's so important, so important. And, and we're seeing that right now. We're seeing that. So thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, we actually did a, a webinar on that topic. So thank you for bringing it up. So somebody wanted to know what is HPNC, Angela? Sure, we're a, a standalone hyper-local uh, youth center on the south side of Chicago. Awesome. awesome. About a $1.2 million dollar budget. But I used to run an organization that was 60,000 and another one that was 300,000. And this one is 1.2 million. It's all the same principle, no matter your organization size. Okay, so HPNC stands for what? Hyde Park Neighborhood Club. There we go. So I think that's what she wanted to know. Okay, a couple of people sent me a couple of direct messages how you get in touch with TechSoup um, about your account. Um, it's customer service at techsoup.org. Customer service at techsoup.org. I'm sure, you know, we just came off holidays, so there may be a backlog for someone, um, you know, reaching back out to you but that is how you get in touch with TechSoup.org. Um, um, so uh, put your contact information in the chat room, Angela, because they still want to know what you do. So we probably take up the whole rest of the 10 minutes learning what you do. Um, you did make some great points. Anyone else want to, um, okay, James, hi, welcome. Hi, um, I just wanted to just kind of throw out there with TechSoup, uh, I'm with a Christian ministry. Uh, and really the, the big side of what we've used TechSoup for uh, is Office 365, the collaboration pieces, and also with their um, the discounts for hardware and software uh, have been big things. Like I said, with the Office 365 and with everything that's going on now, that's really been a blessing to be able to have those accounts, even to set up accounts for our volunteers under our same umbrella and be able to video conference. We run you know, the different applications that come along with that, running Microsoft Planner. Uh, and so that whole collaboration piece and being able to work together. Uh, and also with Zoom, you know, we utilize Zoom now to bring together and do ministry events uh, that we couldn't do in person. So uh, for anybody, especially uh, church ministries that haven't seen uh, what TechSoup offers, I would encourage them to take a look. Uh, just like I said, with Office 365, just on the savings for the subscriptions for email accounts and everything, you know, we've saved tremendously. But like I said, then also discounts on operating systems, hardware, software. So there's a lot of things out there uh, that we kind of just grab them when we need them, but not realizing that we can go there and get those discounts. And like I said, been able to utilize that to bring a number of different volunteers into our planning process without them having to go pay for their own Office 365 accounts or set up all those things. So that's something that I would encourage uh, to look at. Thank you. And thank you for saying that. And I want to say that we do listen to you all. James, um, on one of the webinars, you recommended that uh, we do more how-to webinars because a lot of people um, get technology and then they're like, okay, now I got it. Now what? They don't know how to use it. So we're definitely going to be implementing some more how-to webinars because it's important. Once you get the technology, you got to make the best use of it. So we have about five more minutes. I want to ask um, Erica Scott Woods if she would come back on because there was something going on with the recording earlier. I want you to close this out and tell us Yes, what you did as a new nonprofit, a new nonprofit, how yeah. you, what you were able to accomplish. Before you do that, though, is there anyone else who would like to say anything? 
Okay, because some people say they came on late. They say, I came on late. What are some of the strategies? So you have to watch the replay. Do you want to remind you now we're recording this? This will be sent to you via email on replay. So Erica, go ahead. Tell us what happened. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, so I was sharing uh, the, the wins we had uh, as we come in 2022. So as a new nonprofit, we got our 501c3 in March 2021. And um Thanks to TechSoup, I learned about that around the summertime. And I leveraged um, all the webinars, all the access to free and reduced partners uh, to really help uh, stand up the organization. So that way when I go to present who we are, we have like the technology behind us and like our, we have a nice sleek website and thanks to QuickBooks partnership, I got that free. So I was able to give them reports for my operating budget and all those things. And so from that, the grants we applied for, um, three grants we applied for, we actually won. I got notification of that on December 30th, uh, which bright, it was bright, this opens the new year for us with a budget of $20,000 uh, for capacity building of our organization. So it's for funding program staff and to really um, support uh, other supports to build up our board and all of that. Um, so that, those are our big wins. Thank you so much. I want to thank everybody for coming here today and sharing all of the great things that you're doing in 2022, your wins, some of the things, even some of your struggles, some of the things you say, hey, I need help with it. And you, you've expressed that. You've said, we need help. And then the whole community in here jumped in here and started sharing your website, sharing your content information so that you can help each other. This is what Executive Director's Chat is all about, learning how we use technology to advance our mission. Um, continue to share your information in there. Um, somebody said, oh, they want to know where you got your capacity grant. See, you sent that directly to me. We've got to do a Zoom, how you use Zoom. Somebody sent a, a message to me that was really for Erica. They want to know, um, great, thank you guys. A lot of people saying this is their first meeting, where you got your capacity grant from. So you can type that in the chat room. Great, she, community foundation. Um, lots of grant webinars next month. We're going to be kicking off our information with GrantStation. I have a comment on how I think boards can better support DEI goals. Yes, um, please, Becky, come on, unmute yourself. Thanks, Saritha. I appreciate that. So I was an executive director for 16 years, and I'm also a former board chair. And currently, I'm a trainer and consultant. And last summer, I had the pleasure of working with a Syrian refugee organization in southeastern Turkey. And one of the things they have is this concept of a general assembly in addition to their board of directors. And I was very intrigued by that. And of course, the laws governing nonprofits are so different in Turkey, or non governmental organizations are so different in Turkey. But I've really been thinking about that concept for US based nonprofits because, as Atiba said, and as Angela said, so many of our boards are primarily older white middle class. And I certainly saw that in my years in Chicago and then my years in um, Minnesota. And what I think is it would be a really neat idea to have in addition to your board, a structure you create that of course would have to be part of your bylaws where you have a general assembly that's composed of your clients because a lot of boards are very reluctant to really open up enough seats for clients so that it is comfortable for clients to actually serve on the board. But we would have seats for clients as part of the general assembly. We would have seats for all of our partners and the organizations we collaborate with and we could have seats for other university stakeholders. You might want to make a couple seats for funders. I don't know if that's appropriate or not. I'm just throwing it out as a thought. Um, or maybe your local university or the school systems. And the idea is that that general assembly might make the recommendations for board members to open up that process. So it's a wider group of people than just your small board of you know, uh, say nine to 11 people, or, you know, some boards are tiny, some boards are like three to five people, but it's a wider group of people feeding in input and generating um, ideas for board members. And they also could be part of the annual meeting, right? There should be an impact report as well as a financial report provided to that general assembly. And there should be some training provided 
to those folks. But I really think that if we're going to open up um, our boards and our nonprofits to really support diversity, equity, inclusivity, and justice goals, it's really important that we have a different structure than simply the board structure we currently use because our boards are too small and they just, they don't open up enough seats when we look at trying to bring in additional people who um, are more diverse and might share the backgrounds of our clients. Very good, thank you. I see Tanya. Um, I know some of you have to jump off. Feel free to jump off. We're gonna keep going. I have a meeting at 2.15 so I can stick around till then, but hey, let's roll. And I want to just jump and say thanks, Aretha, because I have a meeting as well. But I am a two-time state award winner at the state level for diversity and inclusion for my consulting firm. We built, we hired, we actually not hired, but we brought interns in from the university. So in our board application process, we have included the sexual orientation, uh, queer, their definition up front in the process. We also have added training to ensure that we have a board metrics responsibility that shows where we have to have up front. We're doing a pre-selection criteria in each category so that we make sure that when we are doing our selection process that it meets the criteria so that the board is diverse up front. And so it's more from a proactive standpoint. And we've included training so that the board for those uh, that may not be familiar with LGBT or et cetera, um, that because it's something we have to embrace, right? Um, that you make sure that that training is done um, to the board members. So we've incorporated a six, a half hour training over a six month period for our board process uh, every time that we're having a board director meeting um, so that they know how, especially since we're dealing with the justice involved population that are co-parenting um, over the period of time, we wanna make sure that it's very diverse. So I have to drop off, but if you wanna reach out to me, I drop my information, but, but we spent three months building that. So I wow. can help save you some time around that if you would like, all right? Uh -huh. Listen, everybody who has to drop off, email me. We need to do a DEI just for ED chat. So um, please email me if you would like to be on that webinar. Um, Becky, everybody who, who deals with DEI, or even if you have something to say about it. Anybody else have any comments? I'm going to have to re-record my intro so you can stay on and watch me do that. <laughs> Anybody else have any comments? Um, Ron, I see your hand raised. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to. Well, I am the founder of uh, an organization, Island Scholars. We provide scholarships to students from the Caribbean island of St. Vincent. And um, virtual learning has really um, exposed you know, some of the, the, the challenges of our educational system. And one of the things that I've been able to use is to be able to purchase laptops um, uh, using my uh, TechSoup discount because you know some students didn't even have laptops uh, available to them. So thanks to TechSoup and then uh, the the Microsoft software, uh, that's been a huge uh, benefit to us also. So. Very good, beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Anyone else? Um, you all are sending me direct messages. Um, I appreciate it. Anyone else? Thank you for your comments, feedback. Okay, thank you all for joining us today. As you are going out and taking care of the world, make sure you take time to take care of yourself. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.